Welcome to Arkansas Wildlife. We've got a great show lined up for you this week. We're headed to Greer's Ferry Lake to do some fishing with Cody Smith from Fish Greer's Ferry Guide Service. Cody is gonna show us how he uses electronics to find fish and catch them on deep structure. We're also gonna see how some habitat improvements and a bait fish stocking program are helping bring Greer's Ferry back from a low point several years ago. A little later in the show, we're gonna be firing up the grill and cooking one of Greer's Ferry's most delicious species, the walleye. We're gonna cook grilled walleye on the half shell. Stick around and see what that's all about. But first, I wanna remind you that the Arkansas Game and Fish Commission will be operating chronic wasting disease check stations in the 11 county CWD management zone on the opening weekend of modern gun deer season, November 11th and 12th. It's completely voluntary, but we encourage you, if you hunt in that area, to stop by one of those check stations and have your deer tested for CWD. If you live elsewhere in the state and want to have your deer tested, we're also working with a number of taxidermists to provide free CWD testing this year. You can find out where those taxidermists are and lots of other information about CWD at ArkansasCWD.com. For a list of check stations in the 11 County CWD Management Zone, check out page 8 of the Arkansas Hunting Guidebook. Hey, we've got Greer's Ferry Fishing and Walleye Cooking right after this break. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors. For all, for less. Headed out today on Greer's Ferry Lake with Cody Smith from Fish Greer's Ferry Guide Service. A beautiful morning, a little cool uh, to start things off, but, but not real cool. It warmed up quickly. A fantastic sunrise, and uh, Cody promised some fantastic fishing as well. Going fishing! Cody and I actually met on a radio show uh, several months before this trip and he told me that he really liked to use electronics and so when he called me uh, about a week before we went out, he said, it's time, the, the fish are on some of these deep structures. So that was the whole purpose of this trip, to go out and catch various species of fish on, on deep habitat structures, some natural structures uh, like the ones Game and Fish uh, put in last year, and then some uh, PVC or man-made structures that uh, the Corps of Engineers worked with uh, local guides and anglers to put out uh, in recent years. We've put in 129 new habitat locations over the last three years. Nice. And then with Game and Fish's effort too, you know, the Choctaw Project and a few of the others, um, there's, you know, 160 plus habitats out here that have been created in the last three years. Just in the last three years. So, and, and man, I mean, the fish are using them, you yeah. know. We're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll see it uh, with our own eyes yeah. pretty soon, yeah. I'm yeah. sure. We'll, we'll get to take a look. Let's All take a right. ride. Cool. One of the main objectives with this trip, in addition to uh, finding fish on these habitat structures, was to learn about uh, how Cody uses electronics to find fish. Electronics have come a long way in the last 10, 15, 20 years. You know, we used to have just the, the little flashers uh, and then uh, digital flashers. Uh, obviously, all of it's sonar, but right, you know, now they, they've gotten to the point where you can essentially see your bait drop down to the fish and in some cases see the fish make a move to the bait before he ever hits it. I mean, it's truly incredible. Oh, it's perfect, man. God, it it's is. Perfect. There he is, set the nice fish on. Well, that didn't take very long. No, man, look at the shad running. Isn't that great? What do we got? <laughs> a little, little bass. Nice little Kentucky, man. Greer's yeah. very special. Hey. <laughs> That, man. <laughs> Using electronics to find fish deep is one of Cody's main tools that, that he relies on on Greer's Ferry. Now we realize what we're looking at. These are a couple of fish. It's not just a made up, you know, those are fish. If it doesn't say they're here, they ain't here. And after fishing with him, you can see why. In some cases, he'll actually tell you we're fishing for, for this fish right here on, on the screen. 
We're fishing for this fish right here. You're singling out the fish. Oh right? yeah, yeah, definitely singling out the fish. So you're, you're holding your line, you're waiting for the bite, but you're actually looking at that fish on the screen and you can tell sometimes when he's gonna make a move towards your bait. It, it's really pretty incredible to, to fish like this. Can double there he up. is. We can double up. Some people call it TV fishing. Now it's not really like watching TV, and but uh, you know it's not a camera, but but the the, the detail, the, the the way these electronics work now is is, is truly phenomenal. It's a very very pretty double. decent little smallmouth there. Yeah, yeah man. That's fun. That is fun uh, on that light line. Gris Ferry has many different fish species, famous for walleye, hybrid stripers, largemouth and smallmouth bass, crappie, various species of sunfish. The first spot we hit, one of those PVC structures, we caught some really nice smallmouth bass, and that is always a lot of fun. Another purpose of this trip was to kind of see with our own eyes how Greer's Ferry is starting to rebound from, from being pretty down a few years ago. You know, things had gotten pretty tough for anglers. At Game and Fish, we, we looked into that and found out that a lot of that was because uh, some, some problems with the forage base, uh, particularly threadfin shad. Uh, the population was really, really down. You know, the bait fish is, it has been so crucial to getting this fishery back to what it once was, and we are well on the way. So we did a few things, both in the way of habitat and uh, something a little bit different, stocking bait fish. We have a nursery pond there on Greer's Ferry Lake, and historically our nursery ponds are used to raise various sport fish species, uh, crappie, catfish, bass, uh, you name it. Uh, but we started to raise uh, threadfin shad there, and uh, I think that's starting to make a difference. We also raised some threadfin shad at some of our fish hatcheries, a pretty good crop that we got out of our Joe Hogan hatchery at Lone Oak, and then took those up and, and stocked them in the lake. I'm more Something I wanna show you. Look how fat I know, that thing like, is. Look at that belly on that thing. Golly, look at that. Look at that. I mean, that, that's that's a two-year-old class fish that has just got more fat on him than, than we've seen in years, and that's a direct result of the AGOC bait fish restocking program. That forage base is starting to come back, and that's the foundation. So you're starting to see some of these sport fish species, uh, smallmouth, largemouth, walleye, they're coming back too, and we were really able to see that on this trip with, with Cody on Gris Ferry. Oh, get a little more. Oh, oh, hey. That's a good one, I think. Got more shoulders than the other ones have had. Yeah, we found this one here, I think. I, I guess I could help you well, with the you net. Know, I, I'd hate for you to put yourself out. I, re I would rather you try to catch hey, you a little I'm trying football. to catch that. I'm trying to catch his uh, uh, sister over there, her you know sister. I mean? That's a good fish, man. Well, wow. the deal is, with this presentation and fishing out here, Shoot, man. I mean, look how healthy. That's Is that not a beautiful thing? And for north central Arkansas, it doesn't get any better. Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by the Arkansas Game and Fish Foundation. Support wildlife and conservation education in the natural state. Become a member today. <laughs> Give him a fighting chance. There we go. Nice, man. Hey, Sean. Well, he, he inhaled that one, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Here, you want really man? Oh, oh, man. <laughs> Here, I will help with the net this time, oh, awesome, though. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I gotta, I gotta feel useful in some Thanks, way. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Well, you're doing a heck of a job. Don't need to let anybody tell you different. After hitting our, our first spot, or actually several spots kind of on the first spot, we uh, made a run up the Devil's Fork of the lake. On the way there, uh, Cody, uh, we, we're going under a bridge and Cody says, hey, there's a bunch of schoolers up there, you wanna stop and fish for them? And I said, absolutely. Who doesn't like to fish for schooling fish that are chasing you know, top water baits or just slightly subsurface baits? Uh, so we pulled in there and uh, unfortunately, didn't really do all that great. Oh, we hit it. Just keep it coming. Oh! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, do it! 
Yeah, they're hitting it hard enough to bite the tail yeah. off, but not to get the hook. This is something we didn't have a few years ago. You know? Yeah. Bait fish population was so so down, and now we've got bait fish back, so we're starting to see some schooling again. And fish have actually got something to school on, so I mean, it's it's fantastic to see this in the reservoir again. We were talking uh, about how you can see some of the fish on your electronics, and it can be frustrating knowing that they're there, but you can't get them to bite. It's like the grass. It's you like, kidding? you know, you know Are they're you there, and yeah. they won't eat what you're throwing at them. Oh, come on. <laughs> Keep it coming. It's just as frustrating to watch these fish schooling all around you, obviously aggressively feeding, and yet, no matter what you try, you can't get one to bite. But it was still a lot of fun to, to fish for those schoolers under that bridge. They taught us a lesson. They showed us, didn't they? They did. <laughs> Another thing that's taken place on Greer's Ferry over the last few years is a really a focus and emphasis on creating better habitat. Many of our large upland reservoirs like Greer's Ferry, Bull Shoals, Washita, you name it, they're just not that fertile. I mean, a lake is only as fertile as the soil that's underneath it. And let's face it, in the Washita's and Ozarks, it's primarily rock and rock is not fertile. And so as these lakes have aged over the years, they've become less fertile. Uh, one of the things that we've done is to place uh, new habitat structures in there. It gives anglers a place to fish, but it also is a place that attracts, uh, it attracts small bait fish, uh, which attracts larger fish. And one of the projects we did at Choctaw Recreation Area last year, we, we took some invasive cedar trees out of the Corps of Engineers campsite and then working with the Corps and some anglers, and, uh, game and fish staff from all over the state, drop those at various places in the lake. Uh, some other groups have worked with the Corps to place PVC structures at various spots in the lake. Uh, guys like Cody have gone out and actually said, hey, this would be a good spot. So when everybody works together and kind of pulls in the same direction, you can really make a big difference. And the quality of fishing, the, the comeback of Greer's Ferry is proof positive of that. That is a wad of fish. I mean nothing but a solid wad of fish. Our last spot of the day, we, we went to uh, one area and fished for, really just trying to see what we could catch. We caught a lot of uh, sunfish. We were having to kind of pick through the sunfish uh, to get to, finally caught a, a walleye. Look at that pretty fish. The old Greer's Ferry walleye. Uh, after that, we moved over to some, some natural uh, habitat, not anything that was placed, uh, some old standing dead timber, and uh, Cody had a spot, he said he knew we were going to catch some crappie there, and uh, sure enough, uh, it didn't take long, I think about the second or third cast, we, uh, we got some crappie on, and we caught them consistently for the next hour, hour and a half. So just a fantastic day on the lake, and uh, a great guide, a, a wonderful day, temperatures were perfect, caught a lot of fish, uh, and, and most importantly, great to see that the Grizz Ferry Lake is, is making a comeback. Yeah, there's a better one. That's a good one. Yeah. Box full of those and nobody's going hungry, you know? Arkansas Wildlife is brought to you in part by Arkansas's own PK Grills, maker of the new PK360, the best and last grill you'll ever buy. We've been fishing on Greer's Ferry Lake today, and one of the species that inhabits Greer's Ferry is the walleye. Uh, matter of fact, uh, the one time world record walleye was from Greer's Ferry Lake, uh, as established by the National Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame record book. Uh, these aren't world record walleye, but there's some nice fillets. One of the greatest things about fishing for walleye, they're not really known as great fighters, but they are probably one of the tastiest fish that we have in Arkansas. Just really delicious, a, a dense white flesh. Walleye on the half shell. First did this with uh, redfish. It's pretty popular in South Louisiana. By half shell, I mean we have kept the skin 
on one side of the fillet. So instead of, you know, once we get that one fillet off, we just cut it off and you just leave the skin on. And that's going to uh, allow us a surface to go against the grill. We won't flip it. We'll just cook it with that side down and we'll let the convection heat inside of the PK grill, sort of cook it on the top. So you got to cook it a little bit longer than if you're going to flip it over, but it's still a really simple, really fast cooking method. The thing that's really going to set this dish off, uh, in addition to the great tasting walleye, is the compound butter we're going to make. That's really going to be the secret to this recipe. Uh, it's really simple to do. You just let your butter sit out for a half hour or so on the counter till it starts to soften up a little bit. And then you can add whatever herbs and spices you want to add. Uh, in this case today, we'll use some kosher salt, some coarsely ground black pepper, a little bit of lemon zest, some dill, and a little bit of thyme. We're just gonna mix all those ingredients together, roll the butter up in some wax paper and stick it in the refrigerator, let it firm back up while our fish is cooking. And then at the end, when we pull the fish off, we'll just put some pats of butter right on top of it, actually right before we pull it off, and it'll start to melt and get all down there in the fish. Mm, some kind of good. Throw our butter in here. We've got a half a stick of butter there. And it's really simple there. We're just gonna add all the ingredients. And you can go a little heavier on things if you want because you gotta remember there's just gonna be a pat or two of this on top of each fish fillet. So you're not gonna have just really a lot of seasoning. You're not, you're not gonna overdo it. Butter's still a little firmer than I'd like for it to be. You can tell I'm wearing a jacket. It's a little, little, little cool out here today. Just get that all mixed up good there. You want to get all the different flavorings evenly distributed through the butter. It's good and mixed up now. We're just going to drop it onto our wax paper here. And then just kind of roll it up into a nice round shape there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, just making pats of butter here is all we're doing. That's it. We'll take that, throw that in the refrigerator, let it firm back up. By the time our fish is done, slice it up and drop it on the fish. That's all there is to it. The PK360 is good and hot, not too hot. We don't want it up there five, 600 degrees because we don't want the fish to stick. And we want good about 400, somewhere around in there. And we're really gonna use it more like an oven. We're gonna close the top so uh, that fish is gonna grill and sort of bake because we're not gonna flip it over, remember. We're just gonna cook it on the one side, the skin side down. So we'll take each filet. Drop it on there. And that's all there is to it. We'll let that go probably 10 to 15 minutes. We'll just kind of keep an eye on it and see how the, how the fish is cooking. And obviously it's gonna turn white. We're gonna be able to tell by the texture of the flesh when it's complete. We're about six or seven minutes into the cooking process. Going to check it out, just see where we are. We're getting real close. Still some pink in this larger fillet. Probably another five or six minutes, we should be good. I'm going to go ahead and close that down. Go ahead and get the butter ready to go. In the last three or four minutes it's cooking, we'll actually throw the butter on and let that melt down in, into the meat. Mm, it's going to be so good. Our walleye fillets are good and done. Flesh is good and firm. No, no pink left in it. So we're going to Take a few of these pats of compound butter, throw them on top here. That's gonna slowly melt. Just give it another nice punch of flavor here on the end. Man, that's gonna be so good. Okay, our butter is melted. It doesn't have to be completely melted. Make a nice little presentation there. We'll just lay that right on there, a little lemon, some greenery to make it pretty. 
And there we have grilled walleye on the half shell with compound butter. Give this a taste test here. Ooh, that butter, those herbs, and that walleye. Oh my goodness. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Hey, watch out, crappie. Here comes the walleye. Good stuff. Arkansas Wildlife presents the Watch and Win Giveaway. During each episode of Arkansas Wildlife, we'll give away an Arkansas resident hunting and fishing license, a $35.50 value provided by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Visit the Arkansas Wildlife webpage at arkansaswildlife.com and click on the Watch and Win icon to enter. This week's winner is Debbie Coleman from Little Rock. Congratulations and thanks for watching.